everybody. How are you doing? This is Nia Feiler. I didn't see you for a while. I'm happy to be here again. New house, new territory. A lot has changed in the world, in our world, personal world, in the grand world above us and beyond us. And before I even speak about the new moon in Pisces coming to us at the 10th of March, I want to speak about the state of the world. I've just seen some old videos I made three years ago and two years ago, and I want to tell you, I wish I wasn't this careful, not creating panic, and really was more outspoken. And I speak in these videos and of what we are going through now in the world. And I speak about the planets that came in with COVID 2019. And now their cycle has always been, and we're talking about uh, uh, Saturn, Pluto cycles, have always been cycles that have been times of great update for humankind and great suffering. Times that have always upgraded the relationship between the ruler and the rule, the civil rights, the personal rights, the economic system, the political system, and times that always many suffered, many died. Times that have always started with a plague or a natural calamity that brought on a plague. And the plague brought on economic strife and imbalance and that brought brought on political strife and 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 uh, and uh, imbalance and eventually there was a big war that changed the lines on the maps brought up new superpowers and brought down others and it seems like i said at the time that we would miss COVID is here. Time that the war might plunge into a global conflict. 2026, as early as 2026, hopefully not sooner than that. But if we won't do everything in our power to see the love and understanding between humankind, we are very likely to go into a third world war by the end of next year. Hopefully not, but we all know things are brewing. East, West, the pawns are on the, are on the set ready, on the board, ready to be played. God is forbid. And indeed, in this time, when I'm reminded of the hardship, of the suffering, when tears rise up for the dying of men and women and children and animals being extinct worldwide, facing not just death, but a finality of existence for their kind. I let these tears have a place of honor. I taste their healing taste in my mouth. And I know that even as a drop in an ocean, which is all I am, I'm still a drop in an ocean that was carefully chosen of an elite group of souls that was carefully selected and was and is chosen to live at the most important time that men and women have ever existed in the in all the evolution of mankind indeed the ones that could carry the change between losing the dominion over the one spaceship Earth we have, because it would go on, life would go on. The only thing that would cease to exist is the dominion of human civilization. 
we would lose our throne. Or indeed to carry out the change that we would have not one globe, but more than a thousand of a new age of the exploration of space, much like we explored the oceans in the past, of a golden age of peace and prosperity. That indeed I am just a drop, but I'm part of a current that shapes the beaches and makes castles of rock, pillars and mountains fall into the sea. And I do not forget that, that I and you are the heroes we have been waiting for, the leaders we hoped would come, the saviors that could be our salvation if we only put our hands to the oars and give it some effort. That is all that is asked. And we are the messiahs on the white donkey entering Jerusalem. And we are not the point, but we can definitely make one. And indeed, the, the simplicity of things is that we have two poles in this life. One of love and one of fear. And what we send out is what we receive. And at certain times, even putting a sword down on someone's neck is an act of love for life and the living. This is a time that we could upgrade our philosophies, our understandings of the truth, of what it is all that we are part of, widen our horizons, enrich ourselves with higher knowledge and consciousness. And indeed, this is the time of the quickening Jupiter. It's conjunct Uranus. We are in the age of Aquarius and our consciousness is being upgraded continuously faster and faster and faster. We could now use the assistance of our guides, angels, whatever you call them, ancestors, of your personal divine guidance around you all the time. Feel them, utilize them, ask for their power to give them, to give you power to make the changes needed in your life and the lives of others. Utilize friends and community because it is not alone in this age of Aquarius that we do and change things. Seek out the ones that are different as you are and join forces. This is a time to upgrade our personal endeavors and widen them as the sextile between the sun and Jupiter is in the sky, as Venus is squaring Uranus. This is the time to upgrade the relationship we have with ourselves. How we treat this vessel that we are in, and this new moon is a lot about health. It's conjunct Hygieia. It's opposing the black moon, Lilith. This is a time to upgrade and better our communication with the world and our environment, the way we choose to navigate through this borderless world. The reasons that make us move in this world and think in this world and the thoughts that guide us. Indeed with Mercury sextiling Uranus at this time. But the, the ugly head of illusion. The ugly head of conspiracy and not knowing what the truth is of having no reliability of where this world is going, is rising with Mercury conjunct Neptune as we head in to this new moon at the 10th of March. This is a time that we could snap at other people. We could lose our temper. 
We could want to get ahead so bad that we throw away the baby with the bathwater. That we throw away from our lives people and projects that actually bring essence into our lives and value into our lives just because we want to get ahead. So remember that being tolerant, that being civil, is about being like that towards people and in cases that you deal with stupidity. That you deal with backwardness and people that think the opposite of you are not the same. Not when it's comfortable. Mercury is going to sextile Pluto on the 10th. Look deeply within yourselves. What lies behind your motives, behind your needs and wants? and cravings. Better understand yourself and your environment and why you move the way you do. And indeed, this new moon is a very Piscean moon. It's in the 20th degree of Pisces. It's conjunct Neptune. You could say that Saturn in Pisces is playing in as well. Saturn always brings up the need to see reality as it is, not as we wanted it to be or feared it might become. The so-ness, as they say in Zen Buddhism of reality, it is so. Because only when we realize what it is we're facing and standing upon can we actually start and cultivate it. It's conjunct hygiene that talks about the hygiene, not only on the physical level, but on the mental and emotional level that we need to adopt in our lives. And it's facing Black Moon Lilith that tells us about the unconscious, self-destructive mechanisms that could rise up, especially in uh, the term of health, stress, and the way we run things in our lives and our daily lives. The way we criticize ourselves or others, maybe too harshly. So indeed, changing our habits, daily habits, is encouraged at this time. It is facing Juno Moneta that tells us that staying loyal to the hearth of the house, the fire of the house, that really warms up the house, and makes it a place that is protected from the outside world, from the weather that is ever-changing, that is inviting, that alliance to the things that matter most in life, like family and our intimate circle, and the way we provide monetary and uh, uh, um, physical sustenance to our lives, because Juno Moneta is about money as well, Hera. Not only alliance to family and the things most important and intimate in your life. This new moon is sextiling Uranus. It talks about the social and the human upgrade that can now be achieved by us. By allowing this sensitivity to flow within us by letting this femininity to flow within us, by allowing this divine creativity and spirituality that is not of this world, but of the eternal world of ideas, as Socrates stated, flowed within us. And understand that all through this time, Chiron, the wounded healer, is on the North Node, asking us, to purify tendencies and behavioral patterns that have been part of human society so far, but need to be healed. That they are a, a reason of post-trauma and need to be cleansed away. Or we, we might hurt again. Hurt ourselves, hurt others, instead of heal others and ourselves. This is a sensitive time. 
This is about everything I had to say for now. I want to thank you for listening this far and remind you that for private readings over Zoom, private lessons and groups, please contact me. All the details at the slide at the end. May we all live long and prosper. Taku yo yasin. This is Mia Fayda. Goodbye. Thank you.